My name is Joe Ecker. I'm a professor at the Salk Institute of Biological Studies. Our recent study of the human epigenome really involved analysis of two different cell types. It was really a comparison for the first time of a very high resolution, that is an exact map of the bases in the human genome that contain a modified base called methylcytosine. An interest in looking at maps uh, of the epigenome uh, began with studies in Arabidopsis. And our role there was to use Arabidopsis as a, as a model for developing methodologies or technologies for being able to detect DNA methylation. And so once we developed such methods, we then applied them to the human genome. The goal there is to use the technologies we've developed to create maps, reference epigenomic maps of the human genome. And really it provides a a, a, a reference map that will allow investigators to look at various hypotheses. So I view this as a hypothesis generating experiment. I think one of the important reasons to have these, these maps or to really, for the first time, begin to compare how, for example, the map, it changes in individuals. So you can imagine that in the cancerous state, you have one epigenetic map, and in the non-cancerous state, another. And that's very true. But we're now able to look at a very high resolution to see every mark and how they change with disease states, or even just in normal aging, for example. So these maps now provide a reference to say, does this drug affect site X or site Y, and what else does it affect? So it provides an assay to look at the entire genome uh, in an unbiased way to look at some of these drugs. And this is particularly important because there are already drugs on the market for altering the effects of DNA methylation, but yet we haven't been able to look at the consequences of those genome-wide. So this will allow a map for the first time to be able to look at all those marks across the entire genome.